Welcome everyone to episode nine of the We Can Do Better Conversations. So we're still in season one, the energy of leadership. And today's topic um, we're going to engage with is the tension between expressing your true self and the need for belonging, sort of the yin and the yang of that um, as a human being and then also as a leader. And uh, we're honored today to have with us Brian Buck and Oleg Lockheed, to, uh, as well as myself and Nancy, John, our, my co-host, to discuss this topic and expand and bring diverse uh, perspective to this topic. Between the uh, expression of your true self and the need for belonging, Brian and I had a conversation a while back and he kind of brought this up. I'm like, wow, that would be an interesting topic to have on that we can do better conversation. So Brian, maybe kind of uh, give us some thoughts on that to get us started. Yeah, I just think there is um, such an interesting tension on, you know, who we are authentically, and and sometimes we are quirky and the things that we want, but we also have a sense of belonging and wanting to be a part of something. And and what do we do when maybe that belonging isn't in line, or you might fear that your authentic self won't fit in and thinking about what that actually could look like and mean. And I think about an experience once with a, um, I had a, a person who reported to me who whenever she worked with people, she would say things that really offended people always. Mm -hmm. And when I was coaching her, she was saying, I'm just being my authentic self and they just need to accept me for who I am. And I think there's that balance on, okay, maybe, you know, I don't want to say mute anybody, but if your authentic self is not making you part of the belonging, what do you do with that? And uh, it was a, it was an interesting uh, coaching experience with that person. Interesting, Brian. So there's this notion of, yes, bring who you are, but there's the notion of self-awareness and understanding the impact to others around you. It's like, you know, I can be my authentic, aggressive self, but if I start hitting people in or my classroom or my workplace, that's just not like acceptable behavior. Um, and so there's sort of a um, yin and the yang between kind of bringing who you are and then I don't want to say fitting in and compliance because that's not the direction I want to go with it, but there's the impact in realizing, wait, I'm affecting someone else in, in a way that's not positive. Uh, let me kind of be aware of that and um, have that influence what that looks like to be my best self and to bring my best self. So Oleg, what are your thoughts as you listen to this and kind of um, think of your experience? So there are a couple of things that come to mind. The first one is I actually had a conversation with um, Teresa and Reese recently about this. And the question that I posed, and I don't know how deep we want to go with this. So I'm actually going to just go as deep as I can. Go. <laughs> um, and the, the first question is really defining what belonging is, right? Mm -hmm. What is belonging? Is it a feeling? Um, is belonging the mm -hmm. same thing as connection? And the reason why I say that is because as someone who has transitioned between so many different cities and different lifestyles within my life, having to go from Russia to Ann Arbor to from Ann Arbor to Texas, even though the Ann Arbor to Texas was within the same country, it still feels like two different countries that I, w that I went from. So what I've learned throughout my life is that my network and my tribe has been entirely based off of people from completely different regions from where I am. And what it made me realize was this whole concept of belonging. What does it really depend on? Does it depend on a location that you have to be a part of? Or is it truly a feeling? Or does it somehow interconnect to that connection that I believe I want to have with other people? So I think defining it for me helps me better understand what that concept is to begin with. And the second part of the question that comes to mind is, I, I posed this question to Teresa. I remember when I was having that phone call with them and I said, is it possible to, tru to truly have your own true sense of belonging? Mm -hmm. And here's what I mean by that. When you are born, let's say the first nine or 10 months, right? You're a sponge. You're constantly taking in other perspectives, other information for, and 
all of this other stimuli that's around you. Then you start to, let's say, formulate your own opinion. But really, is that even your own opinion to begin with? Or my question is, is it possible to be in a space where you are not influenced by other people's perspectives and have your own true understanding of self and sense of belonging? Or are you always impacted by the perspectives of others? And that's kind of what it made me think of as far as this whole concept of self and belonging and identity to begin with. Because in, in my case, I mean, I've gone through multiple identities and continue to do so every single day. So it becomes difficult for me to understand, well, what is this whole concept of belonging? Because if it is the one thing, well, I'm never going to arrive to it. I'm always going to be evolving through it. So that's kind of what came to mind, you know, as I was thinking about the two is, is what is belonging to begin with? And I think that might help frame the conversation for me a little bit more as far as understanding what it is. How, how do we choose to define belonging based on our own experiences? Love that, Oleg, in terms of the definition around it. And you weren't kidding when you were talking about deep. <laughs> that was awesome. It was great, though, because it gives us a little context for it. And you bring up the, the definition of belonging, but what about this notion of expressing your true self? What do we mean by that, too? And so, um, Nancy, maybe what are your thoughts as we, we kind of evolve the conversation? Yeah, it's interesting because I feel I was coming at it a little bit also from the way that Oleg brought it um, in terms of what is belonging. So it actually brings me back to my experience with our humans first community. So my, I remember the very first call that I had come on, this was the conversation was what is belonging, right? And, uh, and it was delving into this idea of what does it mean to belong? And it was like a really aha moment because one, we got into questions like what you're talking about, Oleg, is like, what does it even mean to belong? Like, what, what, what's that definition? And I can totally relate to what you're saying, this idea of, is it a place? Like, is it a physical, like I belong somewhere? Is it a group? Is it a feeling? Um, and having also, just like you, throughout my life, kind of traveled and, and been in different places, what really resonates for me is this idea of an evolution when we talk about who we are and in terms of belonging, this idea of an evolution of who we are is what actually happens. Love that. Uh, Love that. So, so when I think about, when I think about um, what came out for me really strongly from one of our first calls on the human's first call was that this idea of belonging within yourself first. So this, for me, the idea of like that true self and belonging. So if we go to the sense of like, I don't know if it's a feeling, like I, I don't know if I can say it's a feeling. I'm not sure what I would call it. But the idea that if we, if we want to belong somewhere or feel like we belong, but we don't belong in our own skin or don't feel like we belong in our own skin, then it's really difficult to actually belong with a group or somewhere else because we're always mm -hmm. carrying our, we're always carrying ourselves around. So this space, if it doesn't feel like it belongs, and chances are wherever we go, the sense of like I don't belong shows up. And so the question that would come up for me, like I started to think, okay, well huh, so if I always find that I'm like, well, I don't belong here, I don't belong here, then my question really means like, one, why am I seeking to, why am I seeking in these spaces? Like, who am I speaking to, seeking to belong with? Why am I looking here? And then it would bring me, go, bring me to ask like, well, what do I think about myself? Like, like, do I belong in my own skin? Because chances are that's the gap to begin with. And the rest of it, to your point, oh, like, is like an evolution, like we're always evolving. And so if we're comfortable with the evolution, then then chances are like i look at it this way chances are we may not always be accepted mm -hmm. but we'll always feel like we belong like that's kind of the distinction that i make between the two but that's really what was coming to my mind is that it does start with here first um and then outward like then it goes outward mm -hmm. you know what it makes me think of so there's a book that i'm reading right now called the art of possibility and i just finished mm -hmm. chapter I'm rereading a book, but I'm in chapter three. And every time I reread a book, new stuff comes out. And as you were talking about this, one of the things that I immediately thought of was there's a sentence in the book that says everything is invented. And literally that means every story, everything that we, every narrative that we come with is always invented by us. Therefore we have a choice in reinventing that narrative. 
So when you were talking about, do I belong here or why do I need to belong in this space? Or what does it even mean to begin with? You know, we have a choice, I think, in redefining that sense of belonging. And just because someone else's sense of belonging is different compared to yours, it doesn't mean it's wrong or right. It just is. And I think that's, that's the, um, I think that's, uh, for me, that leads into the segue of kind of um, the self and the acceptance and the tension with it is really just learning to, you're right, embrace your own understanding and your own um, views and your own skin to begin with and say, hey, it's okay if I'm different from the three of you. It doesn't make me any better or worse. I just am. And then from there, I think it just because it becomes a lot more um, joyful to actually be part of a conversation because then we're all choosing to accept each other because we have all accepted ourselves to begin with. You know, one of the things I think about with belonging, and I think there's so many as both everyone's talking about, there are deeper ways to go, but I keep putting on the leadership hat with this conversation. I think about what is belonging from a leadership perspective. And I really think what keeps coming back to me is tribe and safety. That belonging means you have a place where people have your back. And even if, and I like what Nancy was saying is accept it or not, I still have your back and we still can belong and have different opinions and it's safe to have that. So I think about how well are we keeping that, that safety and uh, that tribe piece. And you're right, as we grow and change and, and get to know ourselves better, our tribes will probably change. And what we look for in a tribe might change as well. But I definitely think as we're passing through the villages of our life or the seasons of our life, we have tribes for our seasons that make sense then that we belong, but we belong, but we don't have to stay, maybe. I love that, Brian. And we're getting to some awesome topics in terms of evolution, starting with self-acceptance, right? And, you know, the notion of the tension between expressing your true self and the need for belonging. We're talking about humanity and our humanness, right? And so in order to effectively connect, if you want to talk about connection, how can we connect with others if we're disconnected from ourselves? You may show up in a, the same physical space as someone, but are you connected? What does it mean to have a tribe? What are some things about tribe then? What is, how do you break tribe down to um, and connect it to feeling of belonging? There's some commonality there, some appreciation for others, some shared purpose, some shared meaning there. Um, so acceptance and, you know, we you were talking earlier about, is it a feeling? Is it, for me, there's some kind of a feeling like, and it's probably related to the psychological safety element of it is I can, I can okay, I can step in here and I'm going to be okay. Not only am I going to be okay, but I'm going to be able to engage as myself and, and, and be valued for myself. And so that element of connection, safety, acceptance, as I talk about often, especially with clients when we're trying to create change, everything starts with your relationship with yourself. And to some extent that gets to self-belief. Um, and oftentimes we're talking about um, goals and stuff like that, but there's judgment. So if there's judgment and getting in the way, guess what's going to come up when we're trying to work towards achieving our goals? It's going to keep coming up. So unless we address that, and so it's the same thing as we're trying to evolve and we are, we're, we're unique human beings. So at this point, like we are all different. It's not like if we're different, we are all different. And so how do we value our own uniqueness and how do we keep discovering who we are by remaining curious and appreciating who we are because when we can do that for ourselves, compassion for ourselves, guess what we're able to do more effectively with others. And so when there's a difference there, it's like, hmm, let me question into that. Let me ask and find out about it instead of maybe stepping away or fearing or questioning whether or do I belong here? Um, what if we got curious about how might I belong here or what would I need to belong? And you know, you bring up a really good point in regard to curiosity as it relates to the whole evolution of ourselves. For me, there's a story that comes to mind when I was in ninth grade. So 
because of my background and because of the fact that I didn't, I didn't speak English well at that particular time, I remember I got into this English class and I was always the kid that I would go in the corner and it, you, can, you guys can probably picture this. You could walk into the classroom, corner of the room, and then go like this, put a book <laughs> in front of me so you don't, you don't see me. Because one of the things that we used to always do as part of this English class was read out loud for 15 to 20 minutes. And I didn't feel comfortable enough with my abilities to do so. So I would just hide and look at this giant clock in front of me and just look for the arrow to go from you know, nine to three to six and then the, the bell would ring and then I would be on to the next class. But <laughs> one day I remember my teacher, her name is Judith DeWaskin. She got up in the middle of class and she said, there's no such thing as a stupid question. And it was really in that moment that I had that breakthrough in my mind that I can ask questions and that the questions that I ask do not have to be the questions that other people want to know answers to. Because as you mentioned, we are all on our own individual and unique paths in life. So therefore, education should not be any different and pursuit of knowledge should not be any different. So when I gave, when, when she said that, she created a space for me to understand that I can ask questions. And ever since that, I just started to ask questions and really understand that just because I have a question that I want to know an answer to and someone else may not, it doesn't mean that it's not worthy of asking. And that's, I think for me, that's what started this whole concept of really just learning more about myself and accepting myself more as part of it and breaking away from the fact that there are other people in this world who think differently and just understanding that, that people think differently and that's okay because we're all on our own paths to begin with. So whatever it is that I want to know is completely unique to who I am. Love that all again, that gets to our own uniqueness, right? And so it's the, how do we choose to look at that situation? And your, your teacher created the conditions for you to open up and be okay with asking the question that might matter to you and beginning to not care about what other people think, right? So we're getting towards now, um, as we kind of dissect the frame of the question, is the expression part of it, right? You're starting, instead of hiding behind the book and kind of crouching behind that, now you're stepping into expressing questions and curiosity that you have to answer what you need to, may need to know. And as we think about the evolution of our true self, are we, what kind of questions are we asking ourselves? And it gets me to the topic of unmuting, right? So in the workplace, in, in leadership, as Brian was kind of pointing us back to, how many of us go into work muted and just wanting to survive and navigate the environment because maybe the conditions haven't been created yet. And, and that stifles our curiosity and that stifles our creativity, that stifles our innovation and our feeling or ability to be who we are. And so that true self is not able to show up because the conditions haven't been created. Your teacher created the conditions for you to do that. How many of us as leaders might step into that opportunity more? What might that look like? Well, I think about even this idea of what we were talking about, like a lot of this starts very early in life, right? So this question really triggers for me things like peer pressure, for example. That's, that's what this is about too, where you would want to respond differently to something you want to show up in a different way, but the pressure around you or the conditions, as you said, Brian, around you cause you to feel that you need to respond as the crowd would. And, and the same thing with leaders, right? We think about leadership, especially early on leaders. There's a sense of how do I, I need to show up as everybody else and how everything is accepted around here. I need to show up in that way. And it's a short-term fix, but the long-term view is you erode something within yourself. Because even when we, if you think about when you followed peer pressure, you know something didn't feel right, right? Like we know something's like not right. And so same thing happens in leadership. I can think back to where I was just like, I'm going to do this, but it's something, something's not right. And not questioning that that's not right. There's something not sitting right with me. Um, so I find like, 
this is an interconnected thing where we, we are journeying about like the evolution is an evolution that is ourselves, but then it's interconnected with other people as well. So it's never an, it's, an, it's never an either or thing. It's definitely an interconnected thing. And so that's the tension is we as human beings desire to, belong and connect not just within ourselves but i want to connect with others like that is a desire we have um so it is definitely a tension along the way but it starts so early right it starts so early our our response to that um so it's awesome to hear oleg how i love the fact that your teachers one question created something for you early in life that caused you to go i have another choice um right like that's amazing and and i actually want that for all of us we just all enter it at different points in our life we may not always have the benefit of like recognizing oh that's a change moment for me like sometimes it might go over this way for some of us at points but yeah it's amazing but it starts so early for us but what i love is, is that it's an evolution it's not like oh i missed that so now i'm done for it's an evolution so that's the cool thing and so even these conversations that we're having is a cause for evolution for us and we're interconnected in this in this thing about like what does this actually mean and i can actually belong here right now so it's pretty awesome to think about it that way nancy i like that you brought up peer pressure and that was something i think you and i talked a little bit about this on brian is i was coaching someone who had a fear of judgment of others you know like earlier we were talking about well you just don't care what other people think it takes a while to be able to get that but i was really doing a lot of research in why people judge uh, to be able to help them kind of understand what's behind it. And one of the things that stood out um, in a couple of white papers is people judge because it gives them belonging. And you think about the negative clicks that happen. And I just thought, man, what a dark side about belonging. And especially when you think about hurting people hurt, if our authentic selves means we feel inferior or threatened, therefore, you know, so that's kind of the dark side is I'm expressing my true self by making a click of judgmental people. That was huge. And thinking about hmm, how do you navigate through that? And, and then you even think about in the workplace, uh, some of the leaders that I have worked with and coached, it's amazing and similar to what you were saying, Nancy, there is almost a form of click or peer pressure where they know they should be doing something else, but because they don't feel it's accepted in the organization, they're choosing to do this and it's eating them up. It's eating their joy. It's, it's, they're not leading anymore if they're reacting and are fearful. Uh, and it just creates this negative cycle. Love that, Brian. And, and so what comes up for me, what, the word that's coming up as I hear all of you speak is conformity. Compliance is another word. Um, and it's a choice, right? Maybe it's a feeling that others might judge me, right? This is how I'm supposed to be. And it gets us away from being who we are and our true self. Because, hey, I want to fit in as a new manager, maybe. Nancy was talking about new leaders. Hey, I want to fit in. That's, how, that's what I am seeing. I, in order to be a leader, that's what I have to be, too. And what does that do for what makes us unique in our, our uniqueness? What does that do for how we view ourselves? What does that do for maybe even our belief in ourselves? And we're talking about foundational things. And so then we become disconnected from who we are. And then we have to, we don't have to, but it tends to, at times evolve into how do I understand the conditions of this environment and how do I survive in it instead of how can I add value to, how can I um, expand what we have here, how can I move forward what we have here, how can I create better, we can do better, right? So um, the notion of judgment can come from, oh, judgment gives me some set of belonging because I then conform. Or they'll think I will, so I'll conform. And what if, what if we were so solid in our belief in ourselves that we just accepted who we were and didn't feel the need for that validation to fit in? What might that do for our ability to create better? As an ex-punk, or probably a modern day punk, it's huge. And really, it comes down to 
there's power when you say, that's not my values, that's not who I am, I'm not going to do that. And oftentimes when I have done that, people said, thank God someone said that. And it's just huge when you really own what you're about and you say things uh, in respectful ways because people are looking for that. Love that. And, it, and it's not from an ego place. It's from a I matter place, right? I matter too. You, everybody matters, right? And it's from a self-respect, self-regard place instead of suppression and making ourselves small to fit in, right? To comply, to conform to the created norm, which may or may not be serving us, but that's what we know, or that's where, that's the culture that's been created. And we, we might comply to it and it, things still move forward and we may even call it success in some, in some ways, but we never are able to see what's better until we start to see differently, right? And I think the other thing that I think of as Nancy had started this um, thought pattern was that, you know, whole, the whole concept of peer pressure, I don't think it stops. Um, I don't think it stops because it's just like any other concept. And if, if I think about my own life, it started, started when I was young and it's still a thing. And I think one of the hardest areas to address possible peer pressure is family, in my opinion. And the reason why is because you feel so close to the people within that tribe that expressing a different way of thinking and having that fear of possibly being judged or not accepted. And I, I think deep inside you, I, I understand that, okay, if, if I'm not accepted for this particular view, that doesn't mean I'm going to go live on the streets for the rest of my life. But it, it's, it is, it, it's a real thing to it. It's as real as we make it to be. And so I think um, understanding that the concept of peer pressure is just like anything else. It's a concept that's going to evolve and you're gonna experience it in other groups. And the other thing that Brian, you were mentioning is we're all different chapters of our lives. So you choosing to come into a space and show respect and show your true values is amazing. But I'm also, I, I've also understood that I, I try and do the same things and, and people may not respond the way that I intend them to do so based on my assumptions. But the reason why is because we're all at different points and it's okay for people to be at different points because the growth that we go through is completely customized to who we are, right? It's all based on, I think, the actions that we choose to take and the commitment that we make to ourselves as part of it. So I, I always try and give people benefit of the doubt at any given time because I truly never know what that person may be going through, what their level of understanding is, what their environment is, who do you choose to surround yourself with? You know, who helped you shape this particular perspective? So, and then just even within questioning that, you know, it's in a way it's a form of judgment. So that's why I don't, I don't go down that rabbit hole because I just know that, okay, I'm catching myself doing it. And I think for me, that's the most important part is recognition recognition when I'm judging and when I'm accepting, when I'm respecting or any of these other subjects. And then from there starting to understand why am I doing it and how can I be better moving forward? I love that Oleg. And, and you talk about perspectives, right? And so if you think about anything, it's all on a spectrum. We're all on a spectrum, right? And so you talk about meeting yourself and others where they are. And so, you know, I loved how you related that back to judgment, right? If we think about it in those terms, how unproductive in terms of our attention and our energy is judgment, right? And I really came to understand this more as I got into my first coaching program, right? The uselessness and um, non-value add of judgment in any form. And this notion of accepting people, that you can get to acceptance quicker from a frame like you're, you're we're presenting there. And understanding that if you disagree with someone as a leader, your, your peers in the C-suite or, or you, you can't get uh, consensus or whatever it is that you would look for there. 
okay, well, how do you need to come at it differently to help them make the connection to the value that you see that you, they don't yet see? And so rather than, oh, they're stupid or kind of coming from a place of judgment, all these things you could label them as as not seeing what you see, it's simply, how might I? You, get, you step into curiosity. There's an opportunity to step into curiosity and say, how might I help them see what I see so we can have a, a conversation for the place of what does that possibility us, offer us rather than getting frustrated and judgmental from a place of, I see what I see, but that doesn't necessarily mean everybody else does. and doesn't make them bad, doesn't make me good, doesn't make either one of us either one. We're just at different places with regard to this particular issue or topic. And how might I invite conversation in a different way if there's value in that? Or how might I look at my perspective and say, wait a minute, maybe I need to look at this differently. You know, Brian, you're making me think if you're having judgment, then you don't have tribe. Because you're like, if you have a tribe, are you judging? Because I don't, because if you have a tribe, we're accepting and we are having each other's backs. We're not necessarily trying to compete or compare. So I almost think it's funny how this kind of goes full circle that if you're judging, maybe you aren't belonging or you are excluding. I mean, the minute you are comparing, you're no longer having connection. So therefore you put them out of the tribe to be able to say judgment. It made me think of this line that I come across a couple of weeks ago and it said, everyone we meet knows something we don't. And I think just going into every conversation and encounter for me has really helped me understand that we're all on different paths. And that as long as I continue to keep that in the back of my mind, therefore I can create a space for the other individual to be valued in their own particular way. I wonder, you know, as we talk about judgment, that word judgment, we have a, it's always used in a very negative connotation. And I wonder if we could look at it in another way too, could we judge wisely? Because I feel like a lot of what we're talking about when we look at the opposing side is we are actually judging wisely. We're actually taking a step back and going, instead of looking at it this way, could I possibly look at it this way? Instead of thinking that this person doesn't understand, they don't know what you're talking about, could I take a moment to understand where they're coming from and, and all those questions that you asked? Or like, so I'm one, wondering that we actually judge wisely. We know how to judge wisely. The, problem is that word has always been used in a very negative sort of judgmentally way <laughs> to, to do that. So I actually think we're all exercising judgment in every moment of our lives and we can judge wisely. We can judge kindly. That's the operation that can be taken. And just imagine the belonging we can create amongst each other and for ourselves. We could judge wisely for ourselves too, right? Like, in, like how do we judge ourselves? Um, I feel like that's the space that we can come to and actually create a place, uh, like, like you use the words of tribe and safety. We do that by judging wisely, like our ability to do that, that's, that is a capability we all have. Unfortunately, a lot of us have used it in a very negative way to create the dark side of belonging, Brian, that I'd never thought about, but um, that's a really cool way of looking at it. I'd never thought about it like that, but that's, that's what we choose to do because it's easier probably to do that. Um, but yeah, we're all exercising judgment right now, as, as even as I was hearing us talk. Good. Judgment or discernment? Exactly. And so, and so language, <laughs> and language matters and it's nuanced, right? There's di different um, perspectives on, on language, right? So um, the thing that we may notice, maybe but you get what you're looking for, right? So if you're looking for, um, being right, for instance, you're gonna, you could tend towards being judgmental. If you're reflecting and discerning, as Brian would say, or um, you're choosing to look at yourself first and explore whatever topic may be triggering you or um, causing you to think or frustrating you, um, you're making a choice, right? So if you want to call it judging or judgment or discernment, you're getting back to a a pause practice of sorts or a well-intended uh, redirect of wait, what is, what might this be telling me? Right. And so, I mean, Nancy brings up a good point in terms of um, to have a, a rich conversation about this, re looking at it from different perspectives. There's like, yeah, in terms of assessing, is there safety in this environment? 
what am I noticing that, that makes me feel like I belong or um, am I noticing that uh, aligns with what I, I see belonging as? It's just an interesting way to look at it. You know, and I think when, when you, what Nancy made me think of was when you assess one side, I think you have to do the other and not to get um, political or anything. But, you know, when I think about certain um, leaders or people in the position of leadership, I think oftentimes, um, I've even caught myself doing this before, you know, there's a tendency to only assess the, the negative aspects of it. But then what I've realized is that there, just because the person may not perform to the standards that I've set for that particular individual, and I don't even work with them in the same office, right? I also have to acknowledge that person for all the possible positives and the good that the human being can be. Because I think at the end of the day, no matter what position that uh, person chooses, I always try and understand that, you know, we as people, we're whole. I mean, we make mistakes. Making mistakes is part of the process, part of learning and understanding. And even within that, I just trying to understand that the whole process of learning is completely di different to who you are. So you may have to make hundreds of mistakes, same exact mistake over and over again in order to have that realization that, oh, I get it. Or you may only have to make one. And so I've, I've noticed myself, I would, I've caught myself in situations where I would say, okay, this is a mistake I made, or this person made this mistake once. And then you base all the decisions off of that from one, from that one particular instance. But yet what I try and understand is that there's always a story within a story, right? And so I may understand the outer story, but I don't know the inner story. And the reason I don't know the inner story is because that person may not feel comfortable with me in telling me that inner story. So I think you're right as far as judgment can be used in a positive way. <laughs> and I think it comes with a level of forgiveness and understanding and giving people the benefit of the doubt because you never know, I don't think you never know the, the full narrative of whatever the situation may be. You make me also think about how humility uh, plays a part in all of this and belonging and, and maybe is your authentic self humble or not? Like one of my favorite quotes, is this guy named Saichi Ono talks about, we are only half right, which means we are half wrong. And if you really approach your life as that, that means you always have to work with other people to hear the other part of it. It forces you to need multiple perspectives because the reality I see is only part of the story. And so having, and, and Taichi Ono, he's the one that created the whole Toyota production system, which is where my expertise has been for the last few years. And he was saying that when a leader is showing up with this half right, half wrong mentality, the engagement that actually happens uh, is huge because people could say you were wrong. And he said, half wrong. Love that, Brian. And what you're bringing up for me is there's a need to be vulnerable, right? And a willingness to be vulnerable to step into that. I don't need to be right. I'm only half right all the time. Uh, becoming curious. And so um, we've talked about several components of the frame for the conversation. I want to get to the true self a little bit here. And Oleg was sort of talking about this and it's evolving, right? We talked about it's evolving. It's great, right? It's evolving. Um, and it's, there's components of it, like how you see yourself, right? How others see you and how you think others see you. And then th that sort of, those are sort of three different dimensions to it. And Oleg was talking about, you know, the positive and the net, we're talking about the positive and the negative and, or there's A or a B option, right? I'm always someone that's going to say, what about C? What about the, what else? There's no like, like one way to do anything for me, right? You can tell me this is the way you do this. I'm just like, oh yeah, what about this? How about this? How can we? And so it's always about exploring different pathways, right? Um, there's a thousand ways to do anything, right? Uh, there's just ones we haven't seen yet, like Edison, right? I failed 10,000 times until I've, you know, uh, succeeded. And so uh, this notion of 
the true self. So if I asked you how you saw yourself, how different is that from how other people see you? And what part of how you see yourself is focused more on the negative side, because that's the story that may be going on in your mind, or is um, more positive, and we're not connecting to that or not choosing to see it or share that because there's some story around that. And how comfortable are we bringing all aspects of ourselves, stepping into our confidence in who we are and our belief, which may be evolving, and also being vulnerable, like to Brian's point about I'm halfway, I'm hundred half long, that, hey, I'm going to bring my contribution. I'm still in learning mode because I'm going to bring curiosity here. And then hmm, what might that invite to create interdependence and how we might be better together as opposed to, I got to be right. I'm right. Me, me, me type of mentality, right? What, how about that for a leader and kind of um, the notion of bringing your true self or whole self in a way that invites and creates the conditions for yourself and others to be successful. I'd say even with, within that, as you were saying, that what made me think of is that there are multiple layers to courage, right? That's why I think a space like this is needed. A space like Humans First is needed. And all these other spaces are needed because my hope is that all of the different spaces allow you to tap into a different aspect or a different portion of yourself. So I think what's interesting for me to note as part of it is I may feel comfortable and have the courage to be in this space, right? And be my whole self. But then when it comes to some other area that may be seen as an uh, insecurity or something that I haven't fully connected with yet, I may not be able to play within that space just yet. So I think just acknowledging the fact that cur courage, just like anything else, and just like what you said, as far as the having the C option, it's like an onion, right? You have multiple layers to it. And I think that's also true of courage. And I think sometimes what I've heard is what, what people would say, well, why can't you just, or just develop the courage, right? Just step into it. But stepping into that re may require a different set of steps than stepping into this conversation or the conversation you had with your mom or whoever it may be. So I think just giving people the, the space to take it at their own pace, but also just being an example. I mean, we're talking about being better leaders, right? We can do better. For me, I think that concept, it's such a complex topic because it's not about just, oh, I'm going to develop this skill and I'm good. That's what it means to leader. I mean, just like you said, it's being a whole person. It's, it's having all of the different skills that are part of it. And also understanding that whatever you know now is or may not be the stuff that you need to know in order to connect with other people that become a part of your workforce because of the fact that everyone is different and everyone is at a completely different journey. So that's kind of what it made me think of as far as courage and just really being cautious of the words that we use because words do matter. And so telling me, <clears throat> hey, you just need to develop courage here and you're good, it doesn't always help because the courage that I have to develop here may be entirely different compared to the courage that I have to develop during humans first calls. Right. I love that, Oleg. And what comes up for me is um, when you talk about courage, there's different, there's a spectrum for that too, right? There's levels of that, there's layers to that. So I think about the work I have, the work I do with folks from different cultures, right? And there's cultures and traditions and expectations of others put on them. And I think that's true of us in such, to some degree, no matter where our origins are from and what our family experience might be. And so what if I'm expected to have certain expectations placed on me by my family, my tradition, my cultures, and that's how I'm influenced during my childhood and into my teens and into my early adulthood. And then as I try to begin this process uh, to connect to what really matters to me, it's different. 
I don't want to be a doctor or a lawyer. Um, this particular uh, profession that um, is considered prestigious, which there's no problem with, but it's just not who I am. How do you choose to honor yourself and maybe go against what the expectations of parents, community, um, tradition, culture might be when that's what's been ingrained in you since day one? And you've been working and moving in your energy towards that. You've put all this investment into it. And then to find you're not, that's not who you want to be. You want to be a teacher. You want to do something else. You want to be um, a social justice consultant to go create change in the world because that matters to you. But it may not pay as much as the lawyer or prestigious position. But you're fulfilled when you do that work. How do you then step into putting yourself into the equation of um, the choice there and not just um, sort of comply and acquiesce to the expectations of others. And I think that's a journey that we all kind of, we all have expectations or I, I, I wish Brian could do this. I wish he would go into this career. I wish this is what his you know, family situation would be. And it's like, that's just, they're coming from a place of caring, but what happens when that perspective does not align with yours and we what happens when we choose to defer to others expectations and not step into our own courage and say wait a minute i matter too let me explore this and honor myself and in honoring myself and what i believe will make me happy and joyful and make me enough money to live and build relationships whatever that might be Whoever might have a challenge with that, because they love me, they'll ultimately come around. I think, Brian, one of the things for that, in my experience in coaching people, is so many people have never asked themselves, what do I want? Because they haven't asked themselves, what do I want? They're just going with the feedback, but their heart's going, something's not right, something's not aligning, but they don't know why, because they never said, what do I want? So they don't begin to design for all of this. So I think that is a piece on helping people realize there's an option to ask yourself this. And I think that's part of the self-development, self-identity, being your true authentic self is how Many of us don't like to look at the mirror and even ask ourselves, what do I want to be? Who am I? We get so busy just reacting and we don't take that pause to, to really make that shift. I think that's why we get so locked into hearing people who love us telling us advice off of their perspective, but that isn't always what's going to fulfill us going forward. And it gets back to the core of you know, the, the true self and the yin and the yang and the need for belonging, right? In terms of who am I? Do you even know, if you don't know who you are, how, how do you navigate here forward in a way that honors yourself? And that's the struggle we go through, right? In terms of, I don't know if I belong here, but how do you know, if, how can you get to belonging without knowing yourself? I guess is the question, right? Back to Nancy's point at the very beginning about it's belonging with self first, right? And first, you have to understand yourself before you can belong with yourself, right? And, 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 and everybody's in a different point with this. And, and that's the beauty of it is it's an evolution. It's a journey. And so how do you get curious, non-judgmentally curious about where you are, what matters to you? And you can do this from a, a place where it's not ego. It's just exploration. It's curiosity for the sake of uh, expanding learning and understanding. And so what if, you know, what if what I want to do is different than the expectations that may be placed on me by others? When do I step into the courage to stand up for what I want? And how does that create the opportunity and the space for me to better understand how and where I belong? I just want to pause it hearing you talk. I think if we don't know ourselves, we probably put all of our eggs in the belonging basket. And we belong to this group 
and maybe we identify identify so much with a group, whether or not that group helps or hinders us or who we are, might be something when you think about it, if you don't know this part, you go over there. And maybe it's not necessarily belonging as much as attending or, or being amongst and not necessarily belonging. And someone brought it up before, I'm not sure if it was Oleg or Nancy or maybe it was Brian, the, the, the not connect, judgment and the connection to not belonging or not connecting. I, I think it's the connection piece that becomes at the root of it, back to self-belonging. If you're disconnected from self, do you belong with yourself? And it, you kind of root to where can I start the building blocks from? And so it's sort of what happens first, connection of belonging. I, I, and that's, that could be the uh, topic of another conversation. But if we're disconnected from ourself, where, how are we able to see beyond the uh, turmoil that's going on within us? And I think that's, that brings us to this point of like, what are we willing to tolerate? And some of us have tolerated the angst of it for so long that we are willing to tolerate much for a very long time. The reality is though is, and I don't know if there's any exception to this, right? I, 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 could, be, I could be half right, I could be half wrong, Ryan, as you said. <laughs> uh, when I think about it, whenever we are not true to this idea, like our core values, right? Like the, what, what we truly, like the core values within us, when we're not true to that, there is angst and it can show up in different ways for all of us, but it is something in here somewhere that is, doesn't sit right and everyone feels it differently. I feel like a, there's many of us who have decided and just tolerated it for so long that it's become part of everyday life. It's for example, you know, like you talk to somebody who struggled with back pain all their life. They don't know what it's like to be without back pain. So the, so when you talk to them about, no, like you can actually walk this way. You can feel this way. They're like, what are you talking about? And I have, I know people like that where they've struggled just with some ailment, something, then you're like, no, there's another way around it, but they don't know the experience of being around it. So the back pain is, that's just, that's life. Like that is what life is. And so when someone comes and introduces the idea that, no, maybe you don't have, actually, you may not have to strive that way. You may not need that angst. Now you've introduced me to something. And I have it always, it comes down to a choice of what I want to do with it. But it, I feel to your question, Brian, it just so often so much has been tolerated. And if, even if you think about the original example you started with where family expectations, cultural expectations, I bet you anything, everyone around me in that space has also tolerated it. We all tolerate it. So Nancy, why is it a problem for you to tolerate it? So it's that, it's that thing of what we are willing and able to tolerate. And some of us just get to a point where like, I can't. I just physically cannot do this anymore. There has to be another way. And sometimes what happens is someone else shows up in your life. So perhaps Oleg shows up in my life and I'm like, why is Oleg so different? Like, how come he's not struggling with that angst? How come he doesn't have the back pain I'm dealing with? Oleg, what do you, tell me about you. And now someone else has introduced me to some other, other way. And I think that's where this evolution of tribes and you know, you talked about tribes for seasons. And when we show up as who we are, we show something possible for somebody else who's tolerating something. It's always their choice to decide what they do with it. But I, I think that's the part of, it's for, also for those people around us. But yeah, if we're willing to tolerate it, we can tolerate it for a long time. You know, Nancy, when it makes me think, so I, I actually, in regard to back pain, so this is what you do. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but in regard to, um, what you just said, it just made me think of labels, right? So part, part of the work that I started to do a couple of years ago is really started to create a space for people of different unique experiences, right? And what I've learned was that after a couple of conversations that I had with um, different groups, and there was one in particular, I was having it with an individual at a university and we were talking and he was asking me what I do and um, why it matters. And then he said, Oh, you mean marginalized groups. And I never really come to, I've never come across that term before, before that particular instance. And what it made me realize was that, am I doing more harm than good? If I choose to continue on 
labeling the individual or the group with the same exact label, right? So when we think about negative encounters and people who operate from negative energy, and as Brian Buck, you were mentioning, that for some people, that is that tribe, that is that belonging. And there's nothing wrong with that. If that's what people are comfortable with and that's what fuels them up, and that's what gives them fire, well, then that's perfectly normal. But what I've, what I've noticed is that, and I do this myself as well because I'm an imperfect human being and I'm trying to learn this life as all of us are. But if I continue to label individuals with the same exact label that's being repeated, how am I ever going to create the space for them to break away from that label if they want to? So labeling someone as a negative individual, labeling someone who might have been part of the adoption community or foster youth um, or just difficult circumstances that they've encountered. What I've learned is that it, I think it's important, in my opinion, that I create a space where I just acknowledge you as a human being outside of all the labels. I want to give you the option to choose whatever labels you choose to have as part of your life. So when you were asked, who are you? Or Brian Buck, when you said, what do I want out of life? The reason why I think it's a difficult question to answer is because I have to first break away from all of the labels that have been given to me by other people and by my environment. And that's a very deep point of reflection. I know for me, when I chose to step into it and I said, well, I'm more than just an orphan. I'm more than someone who came here from a foreign country. I'm more than someone who was born into a difficult set of circumstances. That's a point of reflection and that's a point that I had to come to terms with. So the difficulty of answering that question is not only finding the right language to use it, but also understanding the time and the space that you are at within your life to answer that. And I don't know, I, I don't know how you get to that. I don't know if that comes from the number of experiences you gain in life. And then that somehow enriches your perspective where you're like, boom, I know what I want in life. Or if that's just energy or whatever the connection is, I don't have an answer to it, but I just noticed that I think part of being a better leader and knowing that we can do better is also understanding the language that we use with other people and the labels that we maybe even subconsciously put on them just due to our experience with them. Awesome, all right. And so that's, that's, you just got me thinking that's probably another topic for our We Can Do Better conversations in terms of labeling and that, what, what that does, right? And the restrictiveness or confinement that that offers and perhaps an opportunity uh, in terms of moving away from labels and getting to um, a less restrictive kind of um, community focused community building opportunity there. So as we uh, come to the close of our conversation today, uh, I'd like to ask each of you, and thank you all for this conversation, uh, another rich, uh, diverse perspective uh, invitation to uh, enrich and expand the conversation um, that again went where we didn't necessarily know it was going to go and hopefully it was of value to you and then to those that are listening to it. And we invite those that are uh, listening and watching the recording to share their experiences and their perspectives. Let's further expand and go deeper on, on this conversation to um, connect, learn together, and grow together. And so um, with that, um, and then I have an, a, a, something I wanna get to before we close today. Um, Nancy and I will we'll talk about uh, something special that we're gonna talk about. But before we do that, I wanna invite um, reflections, uh, takeaways, key points, of learning or things you'd like to leave the audience with, just to kind of a, a quick um, perspective from you after having had this conversation. So we'll start with Brian Buck. I gotta go first. There's so much to reflect on. Um, I, I just think, I think the main reflection is just probably because it's so recent what Oleg was talking about is recognizing the importance of what's the right timing for people to be able to know their true self and recognize that you only know your true self at the moment 
And as you grow and get other experiences, it keeps evolving. And, you know, I think about so much of my development and knowing myself has been more aspects of shedding than adding um, as I get to know myself more and more and better and more and more focused. So, and that's takes time to do that. Thank you. Thanks for that, Brian. Oleg. I think for me, it comes down to giving people benefit of the doubt and embracing them for wherever they are along the journey, because we never know the battles that individuals might be fighting through on an individual basis. So I think just um, giving people benefit of the doubt and not blaming or shaming them for anything that might have happened, but understanding that life is complex. I mean, I, I think the um, whole concept for me of making life easy, I, I, I don't think it's um, about that. And maybe there's another term, but you know, for me, life, life is truly complex. And the reason why is because of conversations like this, right? We can sit here for the next 12 hours discussing this topic because there's so many questions that come to mind. There's so many experiences that you've countered that I've encountered in my life. And I said, why does this happen this way? Or who says that this is the way that I'm supposed to call someone or label? So I, that's, that's my takeaway from it all is just giving people benefit of the doubt because you never know where they are along their journey. Thank you for that, Oleg. Nancy. Yeah, for me, quite simply, it's just whatever it is you're choosing to create, want to do, want to show up. If you cannot, if we are not, if I'm not able to do that for myself and with myself, then chances are it's harder to do it with others. And so this idea of benefit of the doubt is definitely one of the words that's sticking out. I have to be able to give myself a benefit of the doubt to the idea of forgiveness and all those things have to be, if I cannot practice it in house, the ability to practice it in a community is very difficult because I have no sense of <laughs> having tried it, right? Uh, so that's really what stands out to me is this idea of like belonging starts with yourself and uh if i can create that space for myself i can do that for other people as well and that's the beauty of it it doesn't have to stay with me and i'm solely not doing it for me i'm really doing it that it extends beyond me so that's that's really what stands out for me from our conversation today thank you nancy awesome uh similar for me uh it's this notion of inside out as you were talking about nancy and um, relationship with self, you talk about true self and knowing yourself, it's that continual evolutionary process of getting to know yourself, the nuances of yourself. And uh, that could be a process of adding or shedding as Brian was talking to and just noticing hmm, that no longer serves me, I'm gonna leave that behind, I'm gonna move forward differently because now I know myself better. And that may have served me to get to here, but it's not gonna necessarily serve me going forward. And that half, knowing half of the things all the time as opposed to not knowing, that you're able to continuously learn more about yourself with that mindset, the beginner's mindset, the curiosity mindset, the learner's mindset. And so uh, that uh, is kind of what, I, what I'd like to leave people with and kind of where I'm focused on right now. And we didn't get into this, but I think this notion of true self, the tension between that and expressing your true self and the need for belonging, I'm, my invitation is for people to kind of connect with their heart and um, maybe leave their head a little bit and see where that might lead them uh, in terms of uh, getting to know themselves better, what their needs are, what their wants are, and getting to this notion of I matter and honoring that and their choices um, that they make. And so with that, before we conclude, um, we've got a first uh, breaking news kind of thing here and something that we'd like to share. Um, Nancy will be uh, stepping away from her role as a co-host here because she's got some exciting news that she's going to be starting a podcast of her own. And I'll, I, I want to uh, I'll give Nancy some time to kind of speak a little bit about that. But first, I want to thank her for stepping into the role with me and creating this with me so that we can ignite conversation in this format. And I really appreciate that, Nancy, and, and your contributions to that. And so, Nancy, tell us about what you've got going on now and uh, the podcast that you're launching. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Brian. And yeah, it's, it's a little bit bittersweet for me because the 
the spirit of we can do better conversations is amazing. Like what, what kind of the vision here, especially from Brian's side, the vision around what the purpose is, like it's exactly this and what it can unravel into, I don't know. So I'm, I will still be experiencing this journey, uh, even though I'm not uh, a co-host along the way. So I wanna thank Brian for the opportunity that I had to be part of this um, to get it started. Um, I've actually, it's just as this conversation we've had today is like so pivotal to my decision around this podcast. So I started a part, actually it's going to be launching February 3rd. Uh, it's called the relation, it's called relational introvert. And it's something that I've had in mind for a while to do. And uh, it's quite simple. It's really a little bit of a, a story about, it, it definitely connects to my own story. It's, it's really about being able to shine a light on the people strengths, the leadership strengths of a group of people that may go noticed as being quiet <laughs> and may go noticed as like, perhaps I don't know that we see that in them. And so it's just shining a different light in that space. It's a little bit of my own personal story, but also engaging other people along the way in that story and being able to talk about this idea. It's actually, if you think about we can do better, could we perhaps, if we understood each other better, do better? And so it's not just about demystifying things, about making connections to the fact that we all matter and we all can do better. Um, so that's the spirit behind it. It's very much also taking for a, a page out of Kevin Monroe's when he mentioned about run the experiment. So this is definitely me running a journey and running an experiment and going with something that is important to me. And I know speaks to a lot of people as well. So I'm excited about that. Um, and I definitely wanted to thank you, Brian, for the opportunity to be part of this this group here, this has actually shaped me in what I'm doing as well. So when we talk about journey and connections like this, I don't know that I would have thought about the other step had I not been a part of this. So I'm really grateful for the opportunity to have worked with you, Brian. And um, I mean, we continue to be part of the Humans First community. So I'm, we'll be connected, all of us. And um, I wanna just thank, thank you for giving me the space just to chat about this as well. Awesome, Nancy. Thanks for sharing that with us. We'll look forward to that. It'll be Monday, right? February 3rd. That's right. So that's right. After the Super Bowl, you get Nancy's podcast on Monday. Yes. It's kind of cool, right? <laughs> so um, so let's uh, close up here by uh, thanking Brian Buck, Oleg Loki, Nancy John for this wonderful conversation. And again, the invitation back to you. Share this with others you think may, um, may want to connect to this uh, conversation and might be able to learn from it and invite further conversation and contribution to enrich and expand this, this uh, wonderful conversation around uh, expressing your true self and belonging and the, the need for belonging and the tension that's there so we can kind of create learning for all of us through all of us. And so with that, I'll say thank you. Let's create better together.